Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're going to do the real review for the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Now this video might be kind of long, so grab your popcorn and your thought juice and let's get comfortable. First things first, let me just clarify something for everybody that's new to my channel. When I say real review, I'm not trying to say that anybody else's review is fake. No, I say real review because I'm a real consumer. I bought the phone myself. Nobody's sponsoring me. Nobody's paying me to say I like anything. If I say I don't like something, you can believe that I don't like it. And if I say I like something, you can believe that I'm definitely feeling it. Y'all know my motto. I only pledge allegiance to the hotness. And this is hot. Now, if you ain't got all night to be watching long videos, I'm going to make this real easy for you. The Samsung Galaxy Note 9 is the best phone out right now. Period. Samsung Nights, hear me and rejoice. We are officially on top of the food chain again. Now look, we had a little bit of heat with the Galaxy Note 7, the fireball, all right, no pun intended. That kind of hurt our credibility a little bit. That knocked us down a peg, all right? Then when the Galaxy Note 8 came out, we was kind of like hyenas because we had a little bit of lag on that phone. It is what it is. Galaxy Note 9, we are official apex predators again. All right, so all my Samsung Knights, stand up. Now, I'm gonna start off by answering three questions. Number one, you got yourself a brand new Galaxy Note 8. Should you upgrade and get the Galaxy Note 9? Yes and no. And let me explain to you what I mean. Yes, if you got a Galaxy Note 8 and it's lagging, it's slowing down, you got hiccups on it, you're gonna need an upgrade. Now me and the way I move, I don't care what phone it is. Mate RS, I paid 2,600 bucks for it. Any phone that starts lagging, it cannot be my daily driver. Now, I can still use it for other stuff, the camera, the speakers, whatever, but I can't use it as my daily driver. So if you got a Galaxy Note 8 and it's lagging, you're going to want to get an upgrade. And the upgrade that you want is the Note 9. Now, if you got a Galaxy Note 8, I know I'm getting ready to get mad comments. I read them all the time. I got my Galaxy Note 8. It's still running like brand new, fresh out of the box. Congratulations, I right, keep that phone. If you got a Galaxy Note 8 and it has no lag, you don't need a new Galaxy Note 9. You're not getting that much upgrades. Of course, you're getting more storage, depending on what version you get. You're getting a little bit more RAM. You got the latest and greatest processor, and you have the bragging rights of saying I'm an Apex Predator. But if you don't care about that kind of stuff, stay with your Galaxy Note 8. Next question. You got a Galaxy S9 Plus, should you upgrade and get the Galaxy Note 9? And the answer is no, unless, I right, listen closely, unless you want that S Pen. Now we're gonna talk about the S Pen in a second, which is crazy, but if you don't care about the S Pen, maybe you had a Galaxy Note in the past and you find yourself not using the S Pen every day, you don't need to upgrade. Galaxy Note 9, Galaxy S9 Plus, basically the same phone. All right, you're getting a little bit more battery, a little bit more storage, and again, depending on which version you get, a little bit more RAM, but everything else is pretty much the same. The camera, the speaker sound, almost identical. The display is the same. It's pretty much the same phone. So if you got a Galaxy S9 Plus, stick with that until you get the Galaxy S10 or the uh, foldable Galaxy. Last question. Now this is the most important question that everybody been asking me all week. And this is the reason why I waited so long to do this video. Is my Galaxy Note 9 showing any signs of lag? And the answer is no. And I'm happy to say that again, Samsung Knights, hear me and rejoice. No lag on your Galaxy Note 9. Now I said this before and I'm gonna say it again. Samsung has officially figured out the mystery of TouchWiz. Now I don't know what they did. Whoever's doing the computations, maybe they forgot to move the decimal point. They didn't carry the one. I don't know what they've been doing all these years. But whatever they did lately with the Galaxy S9 Plus and the Galaxy Note 9, no lag on your Samsung device. That is a major, major, major go. Now I had the demo unit for about two weeks, no lag. And I beat it into the ground. I tried to get it to lag. I got the retail version, used it all weekend, no lag yet. So right now I'm going on record and saying the Galaxy phones, they not lagging anymore. Now, just like any other phone that I review, there's always gonna be some things that I don't like. So let's talk about those first. Also, shout out to White Shoes, back in the building. Number one, the price. 
Now y'all know I gotta say it, so let's all say it together. The price is too goddamn high. Now look, I, now, as much as I like Samsung phones, and I got a lot of respect for Samsung, I'm not co-signing on no $1,000 phones in this day and age. You got too many other phones, OnePlus 6, you got the Huawei Honor V10, you got too many other phones that are literally, literally half the price. You can get a OnePlus 6, same internal specs, same processor, GPU. Of course, you're not gonna have all the bells and whistles, but if you don't really care about that, like I said, you could get a quality flagship style phone for literally half the price. So a thousand bucks, the price is too goddamn high. Now, there's a little asterisk, a little side note. If you are gonna pay a thousand bucks for a phone, this is the one you want. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Next, things I don't like. Storage options. Now, Samsung, I gotta respect y'all for this one because that was a savage hustler move. Storage options. Now, if you watch my Note 8 real review, one of the things I didn't like is the Note came in a 64 gig version. I said 64 gigs, that ain't enough. Minimum storage should be 128. So kudos to Samsung for listening. So the, now the Galaxy Note 9 starts at 128 gigs. Okay, cool. I'm happy with that. But then after that, you go from 128 gigs to 512 gigs. Something's missing. All right, Samsung, that was a gangster move. They got rid of 256 gigs. Look, now, if it's up to me, they should have had three choices. 1,000 bucks for the 128, maybe 1,100 for 256, and then the big dog 1,250 for the 512 gigs. Now look, if you're a storage monster, that's one of my new phrases that I'm coining tonight. If you're a storage monster, then you're gonna need 512 gigs worth of storage. Don't worry about the extra two gigs of RAM, we'll talk about that in a minute. That's not make it or break it. You're really spending that extra money for the storage. Now keep in mind, these phones do have micro SD card slots for expandable memory. So if you're storing certain things, you can use that. You don't necessarily need 512 gigs worth of storage unless you're a storage monster. Now me, I'm a phone thug. That's another phrase that I'm coining. Instead of buying extra storage and trying to put more storage on the phone, I just go out and get another phone. That's how I move. So you got two the categories of people. You got the storage monsters and the phone thugs. Where do you fit in? Hashtag it in the comment section. But again, one of the things I don't like, I think they should have had a 256 gig version for 1100 bucks. I would have went with that one. Now, 128 gigs, I find myself most of the time using anywhere between 80 to 100 gigs. So, 120 gigs is really good for me. But again, like I said, I got a bunch of phones. Now, if this is going to be your main phone and you look at your storage right now and you got 100 gigs worth of storage already used, then you're going to want the 512 gig version, but you're going to have to drop another 250 bucks. I don't like that. And I'm not feeling that at all. Samsung, y'all some hustlers. I need y'all to calm down. Next, S Pen, the battery life. Now we're gonna talk about the Bluetooth S Pen in a second, which is the dopest feature on any phone in the planet right now, trust me. But the battery life on the S Pen is only 30 minutes. Now if you're using your Bluetooth S Pen just to uh, take pictures, then you're not gonna care about that. Ain't nobody taking no photo shoots for longer than 30 minutes straight without putting the, uh, the, phone, the pen back in the phone. And keep in mind, it only takes a minute to charge it back up for 30 minutes of use. All right, cool, so photo shoots, you're good to go. But if you got your phone on a desktop dock and you got your S Pen in your hand and you're using it to watch YouTube videos, to play and pause, you at work, you got the phone in the dock, you're watching a dope video, you get a phone call, you gotta pause it, uh, welcome to CS, I can help you. <laughs> you know, whatever you gotta say on the phone. Okay, cool, uh, hang on, let me switch over. Hang up the phone. Hit that S Pen, unpause the video. If you're watching videos like that all day long, 30 minutes is gonna go by quick. So you're gonna have to put the phone, the, uh, the pen back in the phone and let it recharge for a quick minute, take it back out. Same thing if you got your phone on the dock and you're using the S Pen to scroll websites, you're only getting 30 minutes of use. Now, that's not the biggest deal in the world, but I would like to have seen an hour worth of battery life. Now I know somebody's gonna say, oh, they can't do that because the S Pen gotta be thicker and heavier and it is what it is. I don't care, I'll take a little bit of extra heaviness and a little bit of extra thickness to give me that extra 30 minutes of battery. Because coming from my personal experience, I'm using that S Pen as a remote to watch videos. It seems like the battery always dies right when I'm ready to skip to the next video. And I'm comfortable, I'm laid back, I got my feet up. I'm in a position that I'm getting ready to fall asleep. Just leaning over and putting the pen back in, waiting a minute, 
taking it back out. Now I'm wide awake again. I don't go to work to work. I need to be sleeping at work. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm just kidding. All right, let's keep it moving. So S Pen battery life, I'm not feeling. Next, screen right color with the S Pen. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. When you pull out the S Pen, you get to write on the screen. Now if you had the Galaxy Note 8 or any other Galaxy, you know that's gonna be a white color. Now when I'm writing on the screen, it's yellow because I got the yellow S Pen. Same thing, if I pull out the uh, Thanos Purple S Pen, it's gonna write purple on the screen. You can't change the color. Now I'm not really feeling that. That would have been nice. I, now don't get me wrong, I'm happy. I take anything over white, all right? Adds a little bit more vibrancy. You know what I'm saying? It looks a little bit more lavish having a color. But who says I want yellow? Maybe I want red. Maybe I want blue. Maybe I want green. So they should have let you change the colors. Now, hopefully that'll come with an update or hopefully there's some way you could tweak that. If y'all figure it out before me, let me know. But I tried. I couldn't figure it out. I don't like that. I don't want to write in yellow. I want to write in red. I don't want to write in purple. I want to write in green. I know. They call me Petty Roosevelt. I got to live up to that title. Next. No screen record. Now, I'm not talking about in gaming mode. I said the same thing on the Galaxy Note 8 video, and a lot of people was like, go to gaming mode. I'm not talking about gaming mode screen record. I'm talking about pulling out your phone, any mode that you're in, gaming, performance, optimize, whatever, scrolling down from your toggles, and having a nice screen record toggle. Just like Huawei does, just like LG, just like Motorola, a lot of other phones do it. This way I don't have to go through playing with settings, make sure everything is on. I wanna have a screen record button right at the top of the phone. Now, of course, you can easily download a third-party app and get your screen record on. I do it all the time. But again, I just spent a thousand bucks. How hard is it to give me a screen record button? That's not in gaming mode. Maybe I don't play games. A lot of people that never seen it on the Note 8 is because they don't use their phone for gaming. So why would you be in gaming mode? It is what it is, though. All right, so no screen record button. Let me be let me be clear about that. No screen record dedicated button in the toggles. All right, it's on the phone, but you got to dig around and play with it to figure out how to turn it on. Next, fingerprint sensor. Now check this out. If you got your Galaxy Note 8, you remember I was kind of complaining about the fingerprint sensor because it was up too high. Not to mention, it's on the same level as your camera. So you already know your fingerprint sensor's up here in your pocket, in your subconscious. You're like, all right, my fingerprint sensor is up high. So chances are you're gonna go like this in your pocket. Oh, here's my fingerprint sensor. What happens when you keep going like this by accident? You smudge up your camera. You're gonna miss that world star hip hop moment because you got smudges on your camera. Galaxy S9 Plus came along. Now they put the cameras vertical instead of horizontal. I applauded that. And look where your fingerprint sensor is at. Closer to the middle. This is the perfect placement. Galaxy Note 9, look at the difference. Now we put them edge to edge. You see how high the fingerprint sensor is up? Now this is a big giant phone. So I like to hold my phone from the bottom like this. I don't really like to hold them from the middle. I like them holding from the bottom. Look, this is me holding my phone regular. I can't reach the fingerprint sensor. I always have to, if you notice, even when I do my videos, you see I go like this sometimes, I have to look for the fingerprint sensor. And the reason I do that is because I don't want to accidentally touch the camera. Always in the back of my mind, I got not touching the camera. So that's why you see me go like this occasionally, because I want to make sure I don't smudge the camera. So fingerprint sensor placement, I'm not feeling that. They should have brought it down a little bit. Or they should have got rid of it altogether, and that'll be one of my petty gripes I'll talk about in a second. Next, animations. Now, TouchWiz, I, I, I'm sorry. Even though this is the best phone out, this is the coup de gras, this is the PS de resistance, you know what I'm saying? This is all that. But the animations on TouchWiz, how can I say this gently, are trash. All right, the animations are trash. Now, a lot of times, you're going to see those trash animations. I just had this big conversation the other day. You're gonna see those animations and you're gonna think your phone is lagging if you're not too tech savvy and you don't you haven't been exposed to too many other skins. You don't you don't you never seen the Oppo skin in real life. Maybe you haven't seen the latest LG or the latest uh, HTC Motorola skins. You might just think that that's how all Android skins are, and they not. The TouchWiz skin is still pretty much trash when it comes to animations. And those animations with that trashy, choppy look, 
that's gonna make you think your phone is lagging even though the phone is not lagging. And I'll show you an easy way to do this at home. Now you just got your Galaxy Note 8. Every time you open up your iris sensor, the phone lags a little bit. You're saying to yourself, damn, my phone lagging already? No, it's not lagging. Let me show you what you gotta do. Go to settings, right? Go to your settings and just type in, transi uh, type in screen transition effect. Scoot, scoot shoes. All right, it's gonna be under biometrics and security. You see tr screen transition effect? Turn that off. Now what that's gonna do is when you open your iris center and you unlock the phone, you're gonna bypass that little slow animation because the, the animation is not 100% all the time. Sometimes it looks nice and it looks fluent. And then you say to yourself, okay, that was a nice transition. And sometimes it comes in slow, uh, it gets a little choppy and you're gonna think it's lag. It's not lag, it's screen transition effect. Now, if you're a little bit more tech savvy, you want to go into developer options and turn your screen transitions down to 0.5 or turn them off altogether. Turn your animations and your screen transitions off all of together, off all together, not all of the together, all together. And your phone is going to run like a Google Pixel. You open the app, pop, it's going to pop right open. You close it, bong, no animations. Everything is just going to pop. Now, me personally, I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? That I, I want my phone to have a little bit of animations, but I want the animations to be nice. Perfect example, Oppo Find X. Oppo Find X, I, I think that, that skin is called Fun Touch OS. Those animations are bananas. Do I got my Oppo right here? Enjoy your popcorn for a second. Let me see, do I got an Oppo? Yeah, check this out. All right, this is, all right, watch the animation when I unlock the display. Look closely at the top. You're going to see a light ring around the top. You see that? And you see even the fingerprint, the color ball right there? See that animation? That's an animation that I like and I'm going to leave on. But when you got chewy, choppy uh, transitions and animations, I'm turning them off altogether. So Samsung, it's about that time. It's been about a decade. Maybe they're waiting for the Galaxy S10. I don't know. But it's about that time. We need a refresh of TouchWiz. Or let's just get rid of TouchWiz altogether and focus on Tizen. This is the year of Tizen. All right, Samsung, pay attention. Let's focus on Tizen as the new Android skin. TouchWiz, it had, it, had its, it had a nice run, but let's let it go. All right, let's let it all right, Pete. Next. Now, this is my biggest concern and my big, not really concern, I would say this is my biggest gripe with the Galaxy Note 9. This is my, the thing that I hate the most, the color choices. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the purple Thanos Note. I like the Dr. Manhattan Blue. But if I had to choose, if I walked up into the store, I'm not even gonna say if, when. I, when, because I had to pay for this one. When I walk up in the store and I see that they got four colors of Galaxy Notes available, but they only have two in my region that I can purchase, I don't like that. Now for me, these two colors right here, they would have been my third and fourth choice, not even the second. My first choice would have been the Wesley Snipes black version. My second choice would have been the Duracell copper version. Third choice, Dr. Manhattan blue. And my last choice, the Thanos purple. Now, I'm going to tell y'all a quick story. Like I said, this video is going to be long. This is a movie. All right, this is a movie. This is a miniseries. Quick story about the Thanos Purple. Now, last week, I mean, I'm lying. That was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, my sister had a barbecue. So I went over there with my two brothers. We all hanging out. We getting our drink on. And whenever we hang out, at some point, the dice game is going to jump off. So I pull out the dice, we start rolling dice, and I don't know if y'all ever rolled dice with a bunch of dudes drinking, we start talking shit, everybody's clowning each other, especially when you're losing money, you're gonna start roasting somebody else to try to make back, you know, try to get back some of your pride. You're already losing your money on the table, let me get some of my pride back. So now, shout out to everybody who watched that video, I streamed it live on Instagram, y'all see I was doing my thing, I was taking everybody's money, then it comes to a point where everybody got their phone on the table because even though, you know, we rolling dice for two hours, we still living. You know, we still got to work. We still got families and all that. So everybody got their phone on the table. I pull out my Galaxy Note 8, uh, my Galaxy Note 9, Thanos Purple. This is before I had any cases. I had no cases. So I got the phone raw dog like this. My brother looks over. Shout out to my brother. He's a, he's a savage. He said, oh, let me find out you got the pink Note. You got the pink Note 8? I said, nah, this is the Note 9. Okay, well, you got the pink Note 9. Do that come with lip gloss? Does it come with a handbag? You got the matching stilettos for that? You know, I'm getting roasted. Now, I try to make it sound badass. Like, oh, no, this is the Thanos purple. Thanos is the most badass villain in the universe. <laughs> You're not really going to get more badass than Thanos. This is the Thanos purple. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. It sounds good. 
you walking around with a pink phone. And that kind of hurt me. That kind of shut me up and it kind of hurt me. So I had now I got to turn the phone upside down like this, which I don't like to do because anything, I don't want anybody looking at my screen. I like to have my phone face down, but I can't have this purple phone. And it's the same thing. You go to work, you got a nice three piece suit. You're sitting up in a meeting. Everybody got their iPhones on the table. Everybody got their Google Pixels, you know, their Blackberries. Everybody's looking like a corporate, in, you know, a corporate setting. Everybody's kind of looking like a boss, even though, you know, maybe they not. But they look like a boss. They got a nice Blackberry on the table. They look like a boss. You come out with your purple <laughs> Galaxy Note, your Galaxy Note 9. I, I got to, I, I got to, let me move this Galaxy Note 8 off the table because I keep, I keep getting them confused. You got your purple phone on the table. Your phone kind of looks like a toy now. And now that's not taking nothing away from the phone. It's still the best phone out. It's still a powerhouse. It's still a coup de gras of Android phones. Yeah, if y'all notice, I said that twice. I like that phrase. This is still the best phone out, but having a purple phone, it's not working for me. All right? Now, if this had to be my main phone, I could not rock the Thanos purple. I like it. I could rock it as a backup, a trap phone or whatever, but I couldn't do it. And anybody that lives in Brooklyn and Queens and the Bronx and Manhattan, you live in the hood, you're not going to want to pull this out around your hood friends unless you're ready to get roasted. Now, if they pull out with some uh, Moto G6, of course, you're going to shut them down, but you're going to get those purple jokes. Ladies, now ladies, you'll like this and you can rock this all day and fellas living them alternative lifestyles. I don't judge you. Do your thing. But my hardcore cats, you're probably not going to want the purple. Blue. I will say this, now compared to la uh, last season's, I'm not gonna say last year, last season's Galaxy S9 Plus, that blue was a little bit lighter. That's why I was calling it the marine biologist. That one kind of looked like water a little bit. This one is a lot darker. So this one kind of looks a little bit more manly and a little bit more rugged. Let me get a little wipe down. I could definitely rock this one. Now you pull this one at night, it's gonna look black almost. But Samsung, y'all charging 1000 all the way up to that astronomical price of 1250 bucks. You mean to tell me I can't get a black phone? I can't get the copper? What's up with white? And if you're going to come out with colors, what's up with red? You already know. Same thing they did last year. I keep saying last year. Last season with the S9s. They came out with the red, the red and the sunrise gold. Way after everybody already bought their phones. You pass the 30 days, you can't exchange it. I don't like that. I don't like that from Samsung. I don't like that from any company. You got to respect Apple. Now look at HTC. HTC be pulling the same bullshit. They'll come out with two phones. Then here come the red one later. Now, one thing I will say about Apple, when they come out with three colors for a phone, if you on Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, you got access to all three of those colors. You could buy any color you want that's available. Now, I know somebody's going to say, what about the product red? Yeah, okay, they, they, you know, they suckers for pulling out the product red late. But again, when they do come out with the product red, it's available on Sprint, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. So Apple is catering to all of their customers. Samsung, I don't like this. I, my bad, y'all. Now, I'm a little bit under the weather, so I got to keep pausing the video to blow my nose, but we're going to push through. All right, so I'm not feeling the two color choices that we got here in the States. I would have liked to have seen all four. Now, y'all know they call me Petty Roosevelt, so there's a couple of petty things that I got to talk about. Number one, the phone heats up. Now, I'm not going to say it overheats. It has that uh, carbon cooling system. Sounds good on paper, but the phone does get hot. Now, if you're using GPS or you're streaming or you're gaming for a long time, any glass back phone is going to heat up. This phone gets super hot. But it's not going to overheat to the point that it shuts the phone down. It's just going to be hot to the touch. I don't like that. Next, no IR blaster. Is that the biggest deal in the world? No. Is that a deal breaker? No. But if you had an OG Note, maybe the 2, 3, or the 4, you fell in love with that IR blaster, and you're going to miss it on the Note 9. Now, shout out to companies like Huawei. They keeping the IR blasters alive. This is my going out phone right here. There's nothing like going out somewhere and you got a portable remote control in your pocket. You can change the TV channel, change the stereo, change the air conditioner, change the projector. That's a dope little feature. Samsung needs to bring that back. Y'all know the hashtag, bring back the IR blaster. Now the last thing I don't like is lack of innovation. Now again, this ain't the biggest deal in the world, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more innovation on a $1,000 to $1,250 phone compared to last year's version of the Note 8. Let me give you an idea of what innovation is. 
Check this out. You see that camera on the top? That's innovation. All right, you see that slide up camera? Now I know some people got mis re mixed uh, reactions about this and mixed views on this because it's a mechanism. That's innovation. You wanna see what innovation looks like? You see this? On-screen fingerprint sensor on the Mate RS. That's innovation. You wanna see some more innovation? On-screen fingerprint sensor on this uh, Vivo Next S. And this is the best one yet. Now the Mate RS fingerprint sensor that's on screen is pretty good. It's a little bit buggy. This one, this one works so fast and works 100% of the time. And you wanna see some more innovation? Watch this camera. You see that slide out camera? That's innovation. I would have liked to have seen some more newer features on the Note 9 other than the Bluetooth S Pen, which is arguably the dopest feature on any phone on the planet. But we could have used some more. Get rid of the fingerprint sensor on the back, put it on the front. Let's get some more features. Now, I know what you're saying to yourself. After all of those dislikes, maybe he don't really like that phone that much. Wrong. Just like I said at the beginning of the video, the Galaxy Note 9 is the best phone out right now, period. You could grab any one of these other phones that's out right now, and they're all good phones. But everything that you do on these phones, you could do on your Galaxy Note 9, but there's things that you could do on your Galaxy Note 9 that you can't do on any of these other phones. Namely, that Bluetooth S Pen. There's no app that's gonna let you download a removable Bluetooth S Pen. That's why the Galaxy Note 9 is the official champ right now. All right, so let's get into everything that I do like. Number one, the price. Now I'm not talking about a thousand or twelve hundred and fifty bucks. I'm talking about the trade-in price. You got a Galaxy S8 or an S8 Plus or a Note 8, and you want to upgrade and get the Note 9. Trade it in the Samsung. The price is right. I paid six hundred bucks for a 128 gig brand new Note 9 with a free set of AKG headphones. Now to me, that's a win. Now on a side note, I didn't realize that those AKG headphones retail for three hundred bucks. Let me tell you something. If you pay 300 bucks for them AKG headphones, you better walk with your own Vaseline because you're getting ready to get raped. Don't do it to yourself. Now, y'all see my last unboxing for this phone. Those headphones, they all right, but they not $300 all right. They about 150 bucks all right. And for free, they definitely all right. All right, so the price, 600 bucks with the trade-in. I'm feeling that. Next, let's talk about the look. How does the phone look? You see for yourself, the phone looks beautiful. Glass back design, the cameras, everything is nice and tight. Got the metal frame, no notch on the front. The phone just looks beautiful. No complaints with that. Next, let's talk about the feel. How does the phone feel? Let's all say it together. Feels good in the hands, ladies, you know the procedures. But all jokes aside, that's one thing that people don't talk about enough. How does a phone feel? The feeling that you get when you're rocking this phone. You pull out a BlackBerry, that has a feel. You kind of feel like a boss. You feel executive. You feel old school. That phone has a feel associated with it. Same thing, iPhone 10. You pull out an iPhone 10, you're going to feel up to date. You're going to feel trendy. You're going to feel like you hip. You're down with the times. Now, this happens to me all the time. I don't care what you're wearing. You could be wearing the dirtiest construction boots, paint all over your clothes. You walk in the store and people looking at you like you're getting ready to steal something. You pull out your iPhone and use Apple Pay. The first thing they're going to say is, oh, maybe he's a painter. Maybe he's a mechanic. Maybe he's a construction worker. He's definitely not a bum. He got the iPhone 10. So that's going to kind of give you that feel. So when I walk around looking like a savage, I always have my iPhone 10. Y'all see me in the gym all the time looking like a bum, but I pull out the iPhone 10 and people know that I'm hip. So the phone kind of has a feel to it. Your Galaxy Note 9, same thing. This phone has an executive feel to it and you know, all right? Now you don't have to be the techiest person in the world, but anybody knows when you pull out that Galaxy Note 9, you got the best Android phone that's out. Now you could argue, is this the best phone out period between the iPhone 10 and other phones? All right, that's a debate that I'm willing to have. But when it comes to Android phones, everybody knows the Galaxy Note 9 is the best Android phone out right now, has the best display. Camera, we can we could talk about, we can argue, but this is just the big boy right here. Storage-wise, the S Pen. 
The S Pen to me, if you want to cut to the chase, the S Pen is what separates this phone from every other phone that's out. And that's why it makes it the best. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. All right, so the feel of this phone, executive status. Like I said earlier, A1 Apex Predators. Next, let's talk about build quality. Wireless charge, water resistant, glass back, metal frame. Build quality is A1. Shoes, what you think about the build quality? Don't say anything if you like the build quality. You heard it for yourself. Build quality on this, A1, no complaints. Next, let's talk about the fingerprint sensor. Now the fingerprint sensor works 100% of the time. Uh, somebody's trolling. <laughs> somebody's trolling. Oh, okay. Let me go ahead and like that photo real quick. All right, let's keep it moving. Fingerprint sensor, thought activities on deck. Works 100% of the time. Now I just wish it was a little bit lower but it's A1, all right, so no complaints with the fingerprint sensor. Next, iris sensor. Now, this is a big deal right here. This is your iris sensor, which is super secure. You've seen it for yourself. Let's do that again. Nice and fast, but secure. All right, so now I know somebody's going to say the one plus six is faster. The Huawei is a little bit faster, and I agree. The, those, are, those are, I wouldn't even call those iris sensors. Those are facial unlock. That facial unlock is a little bit faster, but it's not secure. You can't use biometrics to make payments with your i uh, with your um your OnePlus or your Huawei or even your HTC Face Unlock. The only Face Unlock that's more secure than this is the iPhone, and that one works the best. That's the best facial unlock and secure uh, f uh, way to open your phone is the iPhone 10. Second place, Galaxy Note 9. We'll do that one more time. I'm using Intelligent Scan now. So basically what Intelligent Scan is, it's using a combination of your iris sensor and your face. All right, so just in case you happen to wear glasses, it'll bypass the iris and go to the face. Now it's gonna take time to learn your face, give it, give it a moment. Now I know like when you first get the phone, you're gonna be like, yo, how come sometimes I use the iris sensor or I use the facial unlock? It takes longer to open. Just keep using it. Don't automatically give up and start using the fingerprint sensor. Keep using it, let it train your face, and let it train your eyeballs, and you're gonna notice after a while that sometimes it goes so fast, it bypasses the lock screen. Gets better with time, just like me. <laughs> let's keep it moving. Next up, let's talk about the display. The display on this phone is the best display out. I mean, nobody's gonna argue with that. Every phone that's out that has a dope display, chances are they got, this, they got the panels from Samsung. Samsung, they know how to do it with the display. Now, I'm not gonna make that same mistake I made with the LG phone and talk about the nits. All right, we're not talking about the nits. Let's put this on max brightness. Regardless of what the nits are on paper, this phone is super bright. Viewing angles, A1. Now, you outside and you checking the gram and you wanna get your stroll on, you in direct sunlight, you're gonna be able to see all of them uh, different posts. You're gonna be able to read everything. You're not gonna have to keep going like this to see. I said the brightness on this phone, I'm definitely feeling, but the display, the display is just so beautiful. Now, people ask me, why do I use black, black wallpaper all the time? I like not being able to see where the top starts or stops. And anybody that knows anything about phones will tell you black displays save battery. So there's, there's, a, there's a look reason why I do it, and there's actually a functionality reason why I do it also. All right, so the display on this, best in the game. All right, next, let's talk about the always-on display. Now, Samsung makes the best always-on display in the game. Right after that is LG. Now, it's a little bit bright in here, but this is the brightest always-on display. They let you put a picture, and it's fully functional. So, you see I got notifications on the bottom. Let's see, I got some Facebooks. Double tap on that. Let me put my fingerprint sensor on. It's going to take me right to my Facebook notifications. So, I got some friend requests. Now, one thing you'll notice... The always on display does move. So if you're worried about getting screen burn, don't. Look at look at it now. An hour later, it's going to be on the top. Another hour later, it's going to be on the bottom. It's not going to mess up your screen. Now, if you're worried about battery life, you can set the time that it comes on and off, or you can just do this. Turn it upside down. When you turn the phone upside down, it automatically turns the always on display off. You see, when I pick this one up, you see it's off, then it turns on. So nine times out of ten, I leave my phone like this just to save battery. Let's keep it moving. Next, this is another thing that I like. Let me get a wipe down. Lock screen wallpapers. 
Now this just looks cool. I got one on both of these. Let me show you this one. Lock screen wallpapers. Now just in case you don't watch my videos and you're about to ask, stop typing. I'll show you how to do it right now. Open your phone's camera and take a video. It could be anything you want. Take a video of anything you want. As Soon as you finish taking that video, hit those three dots in the top and put set as wallpaper. Now even if you took a video early in the day and the video's 20 minutes long, you could set that as a wallpaper, but it's gonna ask you to edit it. You can only have 15 seconds. So that's pretty dope. So anything that you catch, you catch a dope Ferrari coming down the street, catch, you know, whatever you see, a nice set of buns, and you want that as your wallpaper, record it, hit those three dots, set it as wallpaper, and you got your video lock screen. I'm definitely feeling that. Now, speaking of the lock screen, you got your face widgets. So you see I got the weather, there's your alarm, calendar events, music controls if I had some music playing, and there's your time, date, and your own information. All right, so I'm definitely feeling that. Next, now let's talk about one of the best new features of the Galaxy Note 9, the battery. The battery life on this phone is incredible. Now I'm not gonna say it's the longest lasting battery that I've ever seen, but it's easily the longest lasting Galaxy battery that I've used yet, and I use them all. Now I'm not talking about screen on time. Everybody's screen on time is gonna be different depending on how you got your phone's brightness set. Now, if you like me and you're a douchebag and you got it on max brightness, then you're going to get four and a half to five hours straight. But if you like a regular person and you got it set to 50, 60, 70 percent, this phone's battery is going to last you all day easily. Now, I want to show you a picture, but let me set up a story first. So yesterday I went to Six Flags. I woke up at eight o'clock in the morning, took my phone off the charger, left the house at nine o'clock. Now I had two phones with me, the iPhone as my backup phone and the Galaxy Note as my primary. So from the Galaxy Note, I did all my pictures, videos, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, GPS, everything all day long using the Galaxy Note 9. Got home in the middle of the night, maybe two, three o'clock in the morning. Check this out. Here's my battery percentage. 19 hours and eight minutes later, I still had 16% battery left. That is insane. So I wanted to push a little bit further. Check this out. 21 hours and eight minutes later, I still had 11%. So after that, I said, you know what? Let me see if I could crack 24 hours. Check this out. One day, a full 24 hours later, I still had 5% battery. So basically, with moderate use, it's gonna last you all day easily. Now with heavy use, you definitely guaranteed eight hours worth of battery. Battery life on this phone is a major, major, major go. Now, if you notice, at the beginning of the video, when I was talking about all my dislikes, I didn't mention anything about Quick Charge 2.0 because a lot of people get that confused, you know, just because of the, the numbers on paper. So people say, okay, we're basically up to Quick Charge 5.0 already. That's coming out. What happened to Quick Charge 3.0 and 4.0? The Galaxy still has Quick Charge 2.0. Well, technically, that's true. But if you're timing your phone's charge, it's the same as basically everything else. This is definitely a shit shower and shave phone. Now, it's not the fastest in the world, but from zero to 100, it took me a little bit over 80 minutes. All right, so that's almost an hour and a half. That is not bad for Quick Charge 2.0. Now, maybe if it was 3.0 or 4.0, it might be like maybe an hour, but the bottom line is for a 4,000 milliamp battery to charge from zero to 100 in less than two hours, that is a major go. That's why I didn't bring it up in my dislikes. So battery life on this, incredible. Next, let's talk about the speakers. Dual speakers on this phone, and these are easily the loudest Galaxy speakers to date. That's why I said at the beginning, this is the best Galaxy phone that I've ever used yet. Everything is top of the line on this, including the speakers. Now let me pull up a video. All right, check this out. Now, shout out to my daughter. She just uploaded a new video. Look at the title. Yeah, I know I'm definitely going crazy. Check this out. Listen to this. Let me skip forward a little bit. What's up, YouTube? Listen to these speakers. Great viewing angles.
best Galaxy speakers to date. All right, let me exit out of that. Anybody that wants to check out that video, I'll leave the link for that up in the description. Look at the title. I definitely done lost my mind. Anyway, let's keep it moving. So speakers on this, major, major, major go. Let's keep it moving. Next up, the camera. The camera on this phone is amazing. I wouldn't say it's the best camera out right now. I'd put it at number four. Number one would be my Mate RS or the P20 Pro. Number two, iPhone 10. Number three, I'd give that to the Pixel. And number four would be the Note 9 or the S9 Plus. So definitely in the top five cameras. Now I'm gonna show you my usual camera test. I'm just gonna go through my gallery and show you some random pictures. All right, so here goes some random pictures in my gallery. This is driving in the morning, beautiful. Went to Models, look at all those colors. Night shots look amazing. There's the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Driving around downtown Brooklyn. Got a little video, check this out. Here's our going over the bridge. Look at that stabilization. Beautiful New York City skyline. That's pretty dope. There's our uh, World Trade Center. That's a better shot right there. Nighttime photos look amazing. GPS. Here's downtown Manhattan, Canal Street. Look at those night shots. This is uh, driving through the tunnel again. You hear the sound on that? Beautiful stabilization, crystal clear. Little whip shot. Now I'm underneath yellow lights, that's why it kind of has that hue. Another tunnel drive. Now this is driving through Times Square. Anytime I go to Times Square, I gotta take pictures. Look how beautiful this looks. Look at this one right here. Amazing shots. It's gonna look much better in person. BBQs, there's Madame Tussaud, Dave and Busters, more driving. All right, now this is from Six Flags. Now check this out, we took these in our regular orientation mode. Now this is with the uh, Bluetooth S Pen. Amaya's holding the phone, I got the S Pen in my other hand and I'm snapping the pictures. A little hiding in the background right there. My trying to look all serious. Me smiling like a douchebag. Thumbs up. Let's see, this is the Buccaneer. Just random Six Flags pictures. Here goes a little video. This is the um, El Toro. Love that roller coaster. More El Toro shots. Just getting nice pictures of the wood. Now there's one thing I want to show you. Check this out. Let me grab the iPhone. All right, now let me show you how the artificial intelligence works on the Note 9. Here's a picture I took with the iPhone 10. Now this picture looks amazing and it's extremely lifelike. Here's the same exact picture with the Note 9 using artificial intelligence. So you notice how the computer knows that it's grass, so it made it look a little bit more green. Look at the leaves. This one just looks more vibrant, even though this one is more lifelike on the iPhone 10. But if I had to post something on social media, I'm going with this one. Look for yourself. Now I still think the iPhone has a little bit better of a camera, but that artificial intelligence, like I said, I'd rather have this photo to look at later than this one. Look at the difference in the green. That's amazing. Let's keep it moving. Let's see, do I got any other pictures on here? Oh yeah, I wanna show y'all a few more. Let's go to, uh... all right, here we go. Back in the diner now. <laughs> Amaya's getting tired of me taking pictures. 
Check this out. Nice little drink. That margarita was banging at hula hands. Different orientation. Now look at this one. Let me pull up the iPhone calamari picture. I know I took one. Look at the difference. Here we go again. See the calamari on the iPhone? And look at it on the note. It looks a little bit more brown. It just looks a little bit more delicious. If I was looking at both of these pictures on the menu, I'd order this one. Again, this one is a little bit more lifelike, but this one just looks more vibrant. Check this out. Now here's the super slow motion. And I like the music they add to it. Extra dramatic. That is so sick. I be forgetting to use this feature, but every time I see it, I say to myself, I gotta use this more. Let's keep it moving. Now check these out. Here's your AR emojis, and I gotta keep it real with y'all. That kinda looks like me a little bit. But once you put your AR emoji in there, it's gonna give you all of these different ones you could choose from. There's the Kiki, do you love me? Right? <laughs> all I did was take one picture of myself and make the AR emoji, and it automatically uploaded all of these different ones. Okay. <laughs> That's my singing voice. Me in deep thought. Hi or bye. All right, my morning blues. <laughs> right back at you. Cool story, bro. Me having a little zen moment. You get the idea. They added a whole bunch of these. I never looked at all of them. <laughs> I may use one of these here and there. I ain't gonna lie, they did a good job. You gotta take a picture of yourself and add it in there and let me know how, if they make you uh, look more like you. But it kinda looks like me a little bit. Now here's the portrait mode. See the background is blurry. There go the shoes. Another portrait mode. Portrait mode on this is amazing. Now you do got selfie portrait mode. I did take one. Let me pull that up. All right, so check out this picture. Now if you notice, look at the background. Looks crystal clear. Now I put it on portrait mode. I don't know if you can see the difference, but it looks a little bit better. There's non-portrait mode. Portrait mode. Overall, the camera on this phone, like I said, is easily top five. Let's keep it moving. Let me try to wrap this up. All right, so what we got next? Let's get into multitasking. Now, multitasking on this phone is a beast, and that's part of the reason why you're buying this. You got your regular multitasking. All right, so there's my YouTube video. Let's open up split screen. So let's do, uh, let's do gallery and YouTube at the same time. So now I can watch a video and scroll through my gallery at the same time. Checking out all my videos. I can pause this. Now you hit that button in the middle. I can add these two paired as a home screen app. I'll show you how that looks in a second. If I want, I could pin a part of this right to the screen. Uh, if I want to just pin that video, I could pin that right there and do other stuff and just have that little part pinned. I could swap, but now I got YouTube on the bottom. And I got my gallery on the top, still functional. Or if I want to, I can pin the YouTube. We'll, we'll move this out the way, back on my gallery, and I can minimize that. Now when we go home, there's YouTube. Let's exit out of that. Let me turn my navigation bar back on. All right, so multitasking on this is crazy, but let me show you something even doper with the multitasking, and this is what separates this from every other phone out. Let's open up YouTube. All right, so we could, we could pinch this down. All right, we'll squeeze it in. There's YouTube. Now let's open up, let's open up Maps. All right, so we'll pinch this down. Add that in there. 
Now you notice I got two apps. They're still open in the background, but I got them collapsed. Now I can keep doing the other stuff. So let's open up some more stuff. Let's open up Voxer. I never logged in yet. It is what it is. Pin that down. Let's do our pages manager. We'll pin this down. Let's see what else we got. Oh, there's the pair that I was telling you about. That's already paired up. Let's open up WhatsApp. We'll pin this down. Let's see what else we got. Calendar. Do the calendar. Shrink this down. Now remember, it used to be only five. Now you can have way more. Let's do let's do a couple more. Let's open up uh, Google Plus. All right, so we'll uh, shrink that down. There's your Google Plus. Let's do uh, Twitter. All right, we'll uh, shrink this down. Now I'm trying to do this from behind the camera, so y'all gotta bear with me. Now check this out. Hit that little ball right there. All of these apps open in the background. So now I can open up YouTube. I can open up WhatsApp. We can move that out the way. Open back my calendar. Open back Google. Move everything around. Everything is still fully functional. That is the definition of multitasking. Hit home. Now if I want to, I can just get rid of all of them at once. Hold that down. Hit remove. Recently used apps. Look how many apps open in the background. Now if you don't believe that the note is not lagging, see for yourself. This is the first time in a long time that I had a Galaxy phone that I didn't have to constantly keep closing all the tabs. So multitasking on this is a major go. Now, if you do happen to get 100 apps open at the same time, use your Edge. Let me show you how to do that. Go to your device maintenance Edge. Let it load up. Now, it should be in the high 90s. I just cleared everything, 99. But if it wasn't, if it was at, let's say 93, if you notice your phone was gonna slow, going a little bit slow, you hit optimize, and it's gonna clean everything up for you. So now you got your battery. This is how I checked the battery from yesterday. Now, this is not gonna be that much right now. Let's see, six hours and 44 minutes since I took this off the charger, and I still got 50% battery. And I've been using it heavy, prepping for this video. Goes back to the edge. You got performance mode, storage, memory. Oh, on a side note, try game mode. Even if you don't game, put your phone on game mode. It runs pretty fast. So lately I've been leaving it on game mode. I wanted to see if there was any difference between using game mode and performance mode. Maybe using a performance mode all the time is what made my phone lag. No, all right? Performance mode is running smooth. Game mode, just as smooth. Optimized, just as smooth. But you got your choice. You got entertainment mode. Each one is gonna either increase or decrease the brightness and tweak the settings a little bit. I like to leave it on high performance. That's how I roll. All right, so multitasking on this, major go. Now, I don't really have to go through all of the edges too much. I'll just go through some of the basic features. You got your edge panel. So there's your device maintenance. Now you can add or download as many as you want. Yahoo Sports, I didn't add that one. Here's CNET. This is my apps edge. You can edit this, change it up to whatever you want. People edge, I got a set where I can just press one button, call that person, or press one button, and then automatically compose a text message. Now let me show you how to use these. Let me pull this up again. Now I'm back here sweating like crazy, I'm getting sick. All right, check this out. You got rectangle. So basically what that does is, this creates a rectangle, and you can just save that. And that's perfect for reposting Instagram pictures. So if you're scrolling on Instagram, let me show you how to do that real quick. Let's pull up something. I don't want to get any uh, savagery. I right, say I wanted to repost this picture, right? I'll just open up my edge, rectangle, make it to the exact size of the picture, hit done. Now I got that picture saved. Now I can extract text. If there was any text on here, I could take that off. I could use Bixby Vision. I could draw on this, share it. Or I could set it as a screen paper, but if I wanted to share it, say I want to share it to Instagram. Boom, just like that. And I could post this right on the gram. All right, let's exit out of that. 
And um, let me go ahead and I was about to like that photo, but disappeared. <laughs> let's keep it moving. All right. Oh, shout out to Speak and they got the blue cases. I need that. All right, let's see what else. You got oval. Oval is the same thing, but now you got an oval shape. Animation. Now let me show you how to use the animated GIF. All right, so go to our website and pick out a video. Now it could be any website, any video. So we got BMW M4 Donuts. Okay. Let's hit pause. Go to Smart Select, open up Animation. Let's crop this right above the video. Then we'll hit play and record. All right, so let's exit out of this. And there's your animated GIF. 15 seconds, no sound, but the best thing is works on any website with any video. Use your imagination. Next, now let's talk about my favorite feature of this phone, the S Pen. The S Pen is what separates the Galaxy Note 9 from every other phone on the market, and in my opinion, it's the best accessory out. Now this is the reason why you're buying the Note 9, not the S9 Plus. Check this out. Grab your phone while the display is off, Pull out your S Pen. Now you can write directly on the screen. Call Mike. 347-551-2001. At 10 p.m. Now I can save this directly into notes or I can pin it to my display so every time my display turns on, that note will be front and center. I don't know about you, but there's something that's so satisfying about writing somebody's information using a pencil or a pen, or in this case, an S Pen, as opposed to texting it or typing it in. I'm loving this feeling. All right, so let's go through some of the features of the S Pen. Once you open this up, got your air command. You could create a note. Let's see, uh, by Ciroc. <laughs> we'll save that. Now when I go outside and I go to the store, let me check my notes, hit view notes, and it'll tell me what I need to buy. You got smart select, we just kind of went over that, but now you're using your S Pen, so you got a little bit more control. So if I wanted to just send somebody one app, I can use smart select, auto select, text extraction, pin it to screen, or I could draw, share, set as, or save it. Now text extract, basically what that means is if there was a picture with a whole bunch of text, you can just crop it out, hit text extract, and it'll take all the text only and disregard the picture. All right, so let's go to screen write. What screen write does is automatically takes a screenshot of whatever page you're viewing, and now you can write on it. So if you want to, you can change your pen tips, the colors, and the sizes. So if somebody asks me what's my top four apps, I can use screen write and send them this screenshot instead of typing it out. We'll discard that. All right, let's go to our uh, live message. Now, live message, this is one of the cutest apps. Let's put it on our uh, red. Now, check this out. We'll put, hey, sexy, with a little heart. Then we'll hit done. Now, you can change the format, change the colors. I like this one with the little red hearts. Once it loads up, it's going to give you a preview of how it's going to look when you send it to somebody else. It's gonna come out just like this. All right, so that's pretty cute and pretty sick. We're not gonna share that yet. Let's keep it moving. Exit out of that. All right, so you got Translate. Now, I'm not gonna go through a big demo on that. Translate is translate. Basically, if there's something in French, you just hover over your pen and it'll translate it to English. You got Pen Up, that's your drawing app. And you can also add some more apps. I added Instagram, YouTube, and uh, Google Inbox. Now let me show you what I use the S Pen the most for. We'll go to camera. Basically what I use it for is taking pictures. So I showed you those selfies I took with Amaya. This is the perfect way for somebody to hold the phone out and snap pictures. I'm definitely feeling that. Now the second reason I use it, let's go to YouTube again. Let's see what we got on deck. All right, let's pull up another car video. Let's see, we got some uh, BMW videos, motorsports. 
say I'm watching the video, I get a quick phone call, hit the S Pen, pause the video, answer the phone. Once I'm finished, press it again, start the video. Now I've already seen this video, I want to skip it, press it twice, skip to the next car video. I already seen this one too. Skip to the next car video. Then I can pause it and do my other stuff. That's my second most used feature of this Bluetooth S Pen. And let me show you the last one. Now the last one, I'm gonna have to go to the website. Let's go to uh, let's go to Samsung.com. Since we're doing a Samsung video, why not? All right, so we'll go to Samsung. Let the website load up. Now, if I want to scroll down, I'll double tap and scroll to the next page. So this is cool if you're reading a book or maybe you're eating lunch at the same time and you don't want to get that chicken grease on your screen. Double tap and scroll down using the S Pen. Now, you can change the settings if I want. I can single tap and go to the next web page. But I don't know what I was looking at today, so I'm going to keep that low. <laughs> Overall, though. The S Pen, like I said, is the best accessory on any phone, and it's the reason why you're gonna get this instead of the S9 Plus. You're gonna love it. All right, let's keep it moving. Now I'm gonna wrap this up. What about gaming? I gotta keep it real with y'all. I do not game on the phone. I did download Fortnite. I let my daughter play it for a minute. She loved it. I was playing Super Street Fighter on this. My only concern would be after about an hour, the phone is gonna heat up a little bit, but as far as performance-wise, Runs silky smooth, no lag, no hiccups. Mm -hmm. Next, now let's talk about thought protection. Now shout out to all my dudes that been asking me all week, is this phone fully thought protected? And the answer is yes. Check this out. Now I'm gonna open up the phone using my fingerprint sensor. Here's my home screen. Let's go over to secure folder. In order to open this, you're gonna have to use your biometrics. That's your thought protection folder. So I got gallery for all my clandestine photos calendar for all my secret rendezvous, contacts, that's where you're going to store all the thoughts numbers at, you got emails, camera, internet, Samsung notes, keep all them backup pizza phone numbers, and my files, all your scuzz bucket videos. Once I go to home, exit out of this, hit the lock, my folder's locked up. Now on a side note, if you notice the whole video, I've been opening up the phone with my right hand. Let's open it up using my left hand, or as I call it, my thought print, takes me right to my thought protected folder. That is a major, major, major go. Now shout out to Huawei, they still got the best thought protection in the game, but this is second place. Next, let's talk about Bixby real quick. Now I'm not a fan of Bixby, but I do use it occasionally. The best thing about Bixby for me is checking airline flights. Check this out. American Airlines Flight 950. American Airlines 950 is en route to New York. Another on-time performance. All right, so I'm really feeling that it does work. I'm just not a big assistant person. Now, I'm not going to really try to beat Bixby down too much because I don't use Siri that much. I don't use Google now that much. I really don't use too many assistants. I will say this. This is the best integration of Bixby that I've seen yet. It's just really not my thing. But it works. You can call your Uber. Check the weather, check the time, get spelling corrections, do whatever you want. I just don't use it that much. Now, one more thing I got to mention, if you want to, you can get rid of this. All right, Bixby Home. I always get rid of that. I just happen to leave it for the video. This way you don't accidentally swipe and open up Bixby. I hate accidentally, I don't even want to see Bixby like that. I only want to use it to check flights, and I got the button for that. Now, it would have been nice if you could remap that button, but at this day and age, who cares? Next. Let's talk about you need to unlock your the lag factor. This. All right, I got the Bixby on both of these phones. Let me close that up. Let's talk about the lag factor. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being no lag on earth, one being the laggiest Samsung Galaxy S5 from back in the days, I'm giving the Galaxy Note 9 a solid 10. No lag on this device. Now, like I said at the beginning, Go turn off them animations, turn down them all, all them transitions and all that. You're gonna notice that you're getting no lag. Now all you gotta do is occasionally go to your device maintenance tab and check the maintenance. You could use that if you want, or you could just 
close out all your apps. But look at all these apps I got running, haven't closed out any since the video started, and you haven't seen any lag. Galaxy Note done right. Lag factor on this, I'm giving it a 10, zero. I right, give it a 10, zero lag. All right, so the last thing we gotta talk about, y'all already know what's coming, the floss factor. What does that mean? You just spend a thousand to twelve hundred and fifty bucks on a brand new Galaxy Note 9 and you hit the streets. Somebody pulls up, they got an iPhone 10, somebody got an iPhone 8 Plus, somebody got a Google Pixel 2 XL, somebody got a OnePlus 6, somebody got a Vivo Next S, somebody got a P20 Pro, somebody got a Mate RS, somebody got an HTC U12 Plus, somebody got an LG G7. Somebody got an Oppo Find X. You got your Note 9. Where do you fit in on the food chain? Are you on the top looking like a boss or are you on the bottom looking like a peasant? Well, if you pull out your Galaxy Note 9, you can basically file all of these other phones to the trash. You are the boss. All of them other phones got portrait mode, slow motion, dual cameras, but you the only person that has that Bluetooth S Pen. And you know the old saying, the pen is mightier than the sword. One more thing before I get out of here, let's talk about accessories. Now, one of the best things about buying a Galaxy phone is you're not gonna have any problem finding cases or accessories. Now, I already showed y'all a few, but for the rest of this week, we got the Samsung OEM cases, we got UAG, Caseology, Incipio, VRS, Poetic, some dope leather cases, and we're even gonna check out Out of Box and Life Proof. Hit me up in the comments, let me know what y'all think about this. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google+. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Voxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time. 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know, stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys allowed. Oh yeah, special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat, Flossy underscore Carter, that's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad, I'll see y'all in the comment section early, hashtag salute. Oh yeah, one more thing, I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, Close your eyes and picture me rolling. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces. Spot one to beam up. Energize.